All right, hello everybody. We're going to be doing data exfiltration task six until um, an hour from now because I'm only gonna I only have an hour to do this for today, um, just because I I work tomorrow, of course. So uh, task six exfiltrating using HTTPS. Before going further, ensure that you have the fundamental knowledge of network protocols before diving into this task and the upcoming task. This task explains how to use HTTP and HTTPS protocol to exfiltrate data from a victim to an attacker's machine. As a requirement for this technique, an attacker needs to control needs control over a web server with a server-side programming language installed and enabled. We will show a PHP-based scenario in this task but it can be implemented in any other programming language such as Python, Golang, Node.js, etc. HTTP POST requests. Exfiltration data through the HTTP protocol is one of the best options because it is because it challenges to detect because it's challenging to detect it is tough to distinguish between legitimate and malicious HTTP traffic. We will use the post HTTP method in the data exfiltration. And the reason is with the get request, all parameters are registered into the log file. While using post request, it, does, it doesn't. The following are some of the post method benefits. Post requests are never cached. Post requests do not remain in the browser history. Post requests can't be bookmarked. Post requests have no restrictions on data length. Let's log on to the webthem.com machine using the them try hack me credentials and inspect the Apache log file with two HTTP requests, one for the get and the other for the post and check what they look like. All right, so we're gonna log in and then we're going to sudo cat var log Apache 2 access logs. We're looking at the Apache logs there. And then we're gonna be looking at get and, uh, post request. All right, gotcha. So I'm gonna pull up my Kelly. I'm going to go ahead and get connected to their network. All right, and I'm just gonna Use this bash script I created so I could get connected. And if you haven't already, I recommend that you watch my video on how to connect to try hack me using a bash script. I'll put that in the description below so you can watch that. Okay, and then next we're gonna SSH into the uh, victim here. So let me start that machine up. And so we're the attacker, we're using this um, jump box, so jump them.com to then access other machines and resources. So this is kind of like our beachhead, if you think of it that way, and we're using that to gain um, horizontal or vertical access throughout the network. Okay, back to task six here. I'm going to go ahead and SSH into that machine. So I'm just gonna grab my browser here, grab my terminal, and then input that. And then I'll give that a sec. Yesterday, it took me a few times to get this to work. And I'm gonna pull up my notes from yesterday. Okay, here are some of the notes I had from yesterday, and it looks like it's still not going through. Do this, and that should go through. Oh, okay. The reason it's, I already see the issue. The reason it's not going through is because um, we're supposed to do that from the jump box. So I'm doing this incorrectly. So let me fix this. Um, we're trying to SSH into the jump box. So we're trying to use this command here. And let me. Move this, put this, yep, and 
enter IP address. Okay. And then I'll run that. All right. And then we'll do try hack me. There we go. All right, and um, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take notes here. So this is my jump box here. Copy that, and I'm just gonna annotate that. All right, and then I got my machine IP, which uh, I'm gonna have to determine that. I'm doing ifconfig. Run zero, I believe. Actually, I think it's that's no, I don't think that's actually it. I have config. Yeah, okay, yeah, I guess that is it. Okay, cool. So then I got my IP address here. Make sure I'm not missing any steps here. Mm, yeah, so okay. So mine is 10-0. And I'm just going to put that on my notes so I don't have to keep looking at it later. Okay. All right, so you can see I just put my notes there. Oh, what? Wow. Okay. And then I have my information here. I'm going to clear. All right, perfect. So I'm going to move this over here. Um, this is my jump box. All right, back here. All right, now we're going to SSH from our jump box into the web server so that we can take a look at the logs. All right, and there we go, yes. And then the password should be the same, try hack me. All right, now we've gone from the jump box here to the web server here. And uh, we are going to run the sudo cat bar log Apache all right, and we'll just input that there. And it's asking for the password, so I'm going to type Petroy hack me. Hopefully that works, and it does. Okay, great. All right, and then we'll just read through this. Obviously, the first line is a get request with the file parameter with exfiltrate data. Okay. If you try to decode it using the base64 encoding, you'll get the transmitted data, which in this case is then try hack me. While the second request is posed to example.php. Okay, yep, we got example.php, and then here we have some file and base64 encoding. Okay. We send the same base64 data, but it doesn't show what data was transmitted. Okay. Base64 data in your access log looks different, doesn't it? Decode it to find the flag for question one below. All right, let's do it. So here's the flag, and I'm just going to take this, so everything after the equal sign, and I'm going to run it through a Base64 decoder. And I just went to base64 decode org, and from there, and I'll just copy this and put it in the description. Um, I just input the base64 encoding here, and then I received my flag, which I'll also put in the description. Uh, if you don't know, I actually put the flags in the description of my videos, uh, especially the ones that are very hard to get. I think it's a, a niche compared to other YouTubers who sometimes don't even share the flags. Uh, I don't play games. I, you know, you guys are here to learn, and we're trying to get through this together. 
and um, we're going to get through it together. So let me go ahead and input that for the first flag. Here we go. Almost there, guys. Only one more flag, and then we finish this one. And uh, we're six minutes in, so plenty of time. Okay, and actually we're 10 minutes in. That's fine. So let's see here. So we got the first flag. In a typical real-world scenario, an attacker controls a web server in the cloud somewhere on the internet. An agent or command is executed from a compromised machine to send the data outside the compromised machine's network over the internet into the web server. Then an attacker can log into a web server to get the data, as shown in the following figure. All right, so that'd be kind of like a C2 server almost, um, except maybe it's just it's a web server that you store all your um, involuntary backups in. <laughs> all right, so HTTP data exfiltration. Based on the attacker configuration, we can set up either HTTP or HTTPS, the encrypted version of HTTP. We also need a PHP page that handles the post HTTP request sent to the server. We will be using the HTTP protocol, not the HTTPS in our scenario. Now let's assume that an attacker controls the webthem.com server and sensitive data must be sent from the jump box or the victims, the, the victim one themcom machine in our network two environment 192.168.0.0.24. To exfil data over HTTP protocol, we can apply the following steps. An attacker sets up a web server with the data handler. In our case, it will be the it will be webthem.com and the contact page, contact PHP page as data handlers. Second, a C2 agent or an attacker sends the data. In our case, we will send data using the curl command. Okay. Third, the web server receives the data and stores it. In our case, the contact.php receives the post request and stores it into the temp directory. Fourth, the attacker logs into the web server to have a copy of the received data. Oh, okay. Let's follow and apply what we discussed in the previous steps. Remember, since we are using the HTTP protocol, the data will be sent in clear text. However, we will be using other techniques, Tor and Base64, to change the data stream format so that it will not be in a human readable format. First, we prepare a web server with a data handler for this task. The following code snapshot of a PHP code to handle post requests via a file parameter and store the received data in the temp directory as http.bs64 file name. So PHP and we have our uh, starting if I set post file, then you're going to open the file uh, and then store it in that directory. And then you're going to write file, close the file, and then end PHP. Now from the jump machine, connect to the victimones.com machine, uh, victimthem.com machine via SSH to exfiltrate the required data over the HTTP protocol, use the following SSH credentials. Okay, so this is going to be a new uh, a new terminal. So we'll leave this one open because this is from the jump box to the web server. And instead now we will go from the uh, jump box to the uh, victim one machine. And so we can actually use uh, the command that we use for for the jump box. So let me 
scroll up here you can see this first one goes to our jump box and I can just we're going to be using this quite a bit so I'm just going to throw this here in my IP notes here so that I can quickly get to my jump box when I need to and this is a new terminal and I'm just going to paste this in so we could get logged into our jump box and it's going to ask for your password and I already have the password here in my notes again another reason why you want to take notes okay and you can see right now I have it in a notepad um, however I will be taking this and putting it on a OneNote document um, just because it allows me to search for it a lot easier later so anyways um, so here I am in the jump box now I'm trying to get to victim one so I'm going to SSH to victim one from our jump box and I'll paste that in there oh oops accidentally fat fingered this oh I did it again <laughs> I don't have fat fingers though all right there you go so we're just going to copy this and we're going to paste it and then we are in we're in the victim one machine all right perfect you can also connect to it from the attack box using port 20 22 as followed so we can go from our attack box just over to the uh, victim to machine. What's that part? Okay. The goal is to transfer the folder's content stored in the home them task six to another machine over the HTTP protocol. Okay, cool. So let's go ahead and LSL. And I'm going to see what's in that directory. Actually, what directory are we in? Okay, so yeah, we're in that directory. Just okay, so here we got task four. So we're trying to transfer task six stuff. Okay. Okay, cool. Now that we have our data, we'll be using the curl command to send an HTTP post request with the content of the secret folder as follows. So from victim one, curl. Okay, so we're sending this to our web server, to, to the web server we've compromised. So, okay, we'll just take that command in there. We'll just paste it, throw it in here. There we go. And you guys are so lucky, you guys don't have to watch me type this out because I will have typos left and right. We use the curl command with the dash dash data argument to send a post request via the file parameter. Note that we created an archive file of the secret folder using the tar command. We also converted the output of the tar command into base64 representation. Next, from the victim one or jump box machine, let's log into the web server and check the temp directory if we have successfully transferred the required data. Use the following SSH credentials in order to log into the web server. Okay, so we're already logged into the web server from earlier, but uh, we're just gonna go into the temp directory. So if you remember, I said, hey, we're gonna leave the other uh, connection open from our jump box to the server. And so I'm just going to paste this in here and go over to our temp directory. See if we have some base64 data in there waiting for us. <clears throat> All right. So then it looks like after he does that, you see the base64 data, and then we're catting, we're catting that out so we can see it, and it's just base64 encoded. Next, from the victim one or trump box machine, we'll log into the web server and check the temp directory. Okay, we did that. Okay, nice, we have received the data. But if you look closely at the http.bs64 file, you can see it is broken into base64. This happens due to the URL encoding over the HTTP. 
the plus symbol has been replaced with empty spaces. So let's fix it using the said command as followed. Okay. So the plus symbol has been replaced with empty spaces. Yeah, I see a few empty spaces in there. So that's not good. So I'm going to go over here. I'm just going to paste this in here. And we can see those empty spaces, all right. So we use the said sudo said command to uh, fix those empty spaces. Using the said command, we replace the spaces with a plus character to make it a valid base64 string. So I'm just going to throw this in there. OK. Finally, we decode the base64 string using the base64 command with the D argument. Then we pass the decoded file and unarchive it using the tar command. OK, so cat decode the base64 there, and then we unarchive it. OK, uh, let's try that. Let's see what happens. Oh no, it's not working. All right. Tar F requires an argument. Huh. Ah, uh, I guess it's, we need this little dash afterwards. Okay. Let me try that. Yay, it works. Okay. Forgot the little dash. HTTPS communication. In the previous section, we showed how to perform data exfiltration over the HTTP protocol, which means all transmitted data will be in clear text. One of the benefits of HTTPS is encrypting the transmitted data using SSL keys stored on a server. And before we go into HTTPS, I'm ready to get the flag. <laughs> I'm ready to get the flag, guys. Okay, actually, I uh, thought that would be our flag for uh, task six, but apparently not. So we just have to keep trucking with this one. All right. If you apply the same techniques we showed you previously on a web server with SSL enabled, then we can see that all transmitted data will be encrypted. We have set up our private HTTP server to show what that transmission looks like. If you are interested in setting up your own HTTP as server, we suggest visiting the DigitalOcean website. Well, let's visit it. How to create a self-signed SSL certificate for Apache. Very interesting, very interesting. Uh, too many steps, going back. As shown in the previous screenshots, we captured the network traffic, and it seems that all client and server communication on port 443 are encrypted. Yeah, it's definitely encrypted. HTTP tunneling. Tunneling over HTTP protocol technique encapsulates, encapsulates other protocols and sends them back and forth via HTTP protocol. HTTP tunneling sends and receives many HTTP requests depending on the communication channel. Before diving into the HTTP tunneling details, let's discuss a typical scenario where many internal computers are not reachable from the internet. For example, in our scenario, the uploader them.com server is reachable from the internet and provides web services to everyone. However, the appthem.com server runs locally and provides services only for the internal network as shown in the following figure. Okay, so we have the access to uploadthem.com, which is, this is a firewall, this is uploadthem.com, this is app.them.com, so that's internal. In this section, we'll create an HTTP tunnel communication channel to pivot into the internal network and communicate with the local network devices through HTTP protocol. Let's say that we found a web application that lets us upload a HTTP tunnel agent file to a victim web server, uploadthem.com. 
Once we upload and connect to it, we will be able to communicate with appthen.com. Okay. Got it. So we're using basically upload or them.com as our jump box in that scenario. From HTTP tunneling, we'll be using the we'll be using a nano re georg tool to establish a communication channel to access the internal network devices. We have install a tool in the attack box and it can be found using in the following location. Okay. So you have to go to that tool. Next, we need to generate an encrypted client file to upload it to the victim's web server as followed. Okay. And if you guys are watching in my videos, I never use the uh, provided attack box. I always use my own attack box because I like to have the tools for future reference. So let's go and install this tool. So I'll click on the link. It takes me here. Hopefully, I don't have to compile anything uh, that's in Japanese. I cannot read that. So, uh, or Chinese or something. Okay. Um, well, I got to figure this out. So, anyhow, um, what I like to do is I like to just take, click on code. You have the link here. I'm going to click on that. Uh, they've got a README. I'm going to click on that. So, typically, it takes you down here. Yeah, it doesn't really help that's in Chinese. Hmm. All right, well, uh, if they have a Python file in there, I'll just run it. <laughs> that's typically what I do. So what I'll do is I'll come over here. I have my uh, desktop. I'm gonna create a new folder called, uh, what is this one gonna be called? What is, the name? what is the purpose of this tool? Communication channel tool, there we go. Tunneling, tunneling tool. So I created a folder called tunneling tool. HTTP under slash tunneling. No, 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 not two hours. Tunneling tool. Great. All right, cool. And then I'm going to open the file. Go here, open terminal here, and then we will start from there. So next I'm going to get clone and then the URL. And looking at the time, we are at 28 minutes. So, okay, paste, paste clipboard. Yeah. All right, so I'm paste that link I copied earlier and it's going to download that. And then if I go here, we should see that file. And we can see that there's a Python file there. So that's all I need to get this thing running. I will open up another terminal from this specific location. And then I'll run Python 3. And then the name of the file. And I'm gonna see if it works. And it does. Okay, perfect. Uh, there's other ways you can do this. You can add these to your like uh, bin, bash, and and you know be able to access these tools simply by typing out the name and not having to navigate to the file and type Python three and all that. That's cool. Uh, maybe down the line, I'll start using that. But this is getting me up and running and time is of the essence because I only have 29 minutes left. <laughs> so uh, let's see here. Next, we need to generate an encrypted client file to upload to the victim web server as followed. So uh, I'm gonna use this to generate that file. I'm gonna just copy this command, run it from that directory, and we'll see if we can get this going. Oh, no, it's too many spaces. I should have put this in a notepad before I threw it in here. Or Sublime Text Editor to get rid of all these spaces. Uh, uh, I hope that worked. I think it worked. <laughs> all right, let's see what's next. Yeah, yeah, that looks about the same. It looks like it worked, guys. The previous command generates encrypted tunneling client with THM 
key in the nano reg servers directory. Note that there are various extensions available, including PHP, ASPX for IAS servers, JSP, etc. In our scenario, we'll be uploading the tunneling PHP file via the uploader machine. To access the uploader machine, you can visit the following URL. Visit the URL and then upload our little file over there. It seems like the default location is going to be this uh, keys in this folder, the nano servers folder. So I will come over here and hey, we got a nano servers folder right there. I click on that and a uh, tunnel tunnel php i think this is it right i think this is it let me scroll up a little bit um oh so it generates a bunch of them right so it generated all of these not just one but we only need this one so next i am going to go over to this uploader site and hopefully i don't have any issues with dns or anything uh google and let's go and upload this tunneling this tunnel php file and i'm just gonna go there and I'm upload it and then uh looks like it's starting me off here and my reverse shell is not exactly what we want uh, and um, i'm gonna go to modified here so i can get to see the directories i just modified recently and you can see HTTP tunneling is down here. I can see this file, which, and we can go to the nano servers and we go to the PHP tunnel. Okay, perfect. And then, uh, okay, open, Let me open that. And then it's in there, type key to proceed. Okay, what does it want us to type in there? To upload the PHP file, use admin as the key and let you upload any file into the uploader.com. Once you have uploaded the file, we can access it on the following URL. Okay. Man, you'd have to really compromise this web server in order for you to not just be able to upload this type of file, like a PHP file, but include on top of that, you have to be able to, to then execute that uh, file um, so you would need a perfect situation for that. So anyhow, uh, let's just uh, type admin for the key, like it mentions the type. I was just going to put a URL in there. Admin. And then let me actually retype it because I keep doing typos. I'm going to upload it. The file has been uploaded. I'm going to open up another browser. And then I am just going to... Copy this link here, this URL here, throw it in there, run it in there, and it looks like it ran it. Okay, um, we need to use the in NeoReg pi to connect to the client and provide the key to decrypt the tunnel tunneling client we also need to provide a url to the php file that we uploaded on the uploader machine once it is connected to the tunneling client we are ready to use the tunnel connection as a proxy binds our local machine of 127.0.0.1 on port 1080 for example if you want to access the appthem.com, which is which has an internal IP address of 172.20.0.121 on port 80, we can use the curl command with the dash dash sockets5 argument. We can also use other proxy applications such as proxy chains. Foxy proxy, et cetera, to communicate with the internal network. 
Okay, so curl socket five one twenty seven zero to zero to one ten eighty and then that internal uh IP address that we want to access. Okay. The following diagram shows the traffic flow as it goes through the upload machine and then communicates with the internal network device, which in this case is the apps machine. Note that if we check the network traffic from the apps machine, we can see that the source IP address from incoming traffic comes from the uploader machine. Hmm. Okay. Now replicate the HTTP tunneling, tunneling step to establish tunneling over HTTP protocol to communicate with the flag thin.com with 172.20.0.120 as an IP address on port 80. Note that if you can, if you access the flag thin.com website from other machines with in the network, you won't get the flag. Whoa. <laughs> so uh, some of that went over my head, but uh, I think I think I kind of understand this. <laughs> so uh, let's see here. 172. One. All right. So basically, we have to go back to that Python command. Run this so that we can connect from our attack box to this uploader machine. And then you can establish that tunnel from the, in this case, like um, once you've established that tunnel using this command and the previous commands, then you would crawl to whatever internal IP address you wanted to access. So I'm guessing that you use this internal IP address uh, in your curl commands uh, here so that you can try accessing it. It didn't work for me earlier, so I don't really expect this to work, but I'll give it a shot, see if it works. And it wants us to do that over port 80. And um, scroll up here. Okay. And I'll give it a shot, Let's see. Curl command here. Okay. All right. So here's the uploader machine. There's that. I don't know if I need to do it from there. No, it looks like just a new terminal, I guess. Should work for that. Not too many terminals open. Trying to find out. I think it's this first one. Yeah, it is. No, okay, so that's that's the terminal I have. My tunnel. Just another one. Get your flag. Okay, so get your flag. Is that the flag? Oh. So not just do we want to access that. Let me make sure I'm recording. <laughs> Would it suck if I wasn't? All right, but we want to access the flag directory, right? So uh, port 80 flag directory, right? So it would be like that. And then I would basically input that in my curl command. See if it gets, oh, hey, we did it, guys. We did it. We did it. I wish we could all just get up on our chairs and see each other right now. That would be great. So <laughs> there it is. I figured this out. I figured this out. I have, you know, the brain of a monkey. So anyhow, over here, I put that baby in there. And we did this within an hour. Perfect. All right, guys. So we, we figured it out. We did it. Next, we're going to be doing task 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, looking forward to that. All right, so we're done for now. Uh, let me show you something. So I'm gonna show you how I take my notes. Uh, if you watched my previous video, I showed you 
what they look like, how I use them. So essentially what I do is I have this OneNote and I have these tabs here and I have one for a red team. And then if you scroll down on the red team tab, you can see all the labs I completed. I've done the ripes for them. And what I do is I like to get screenshots of what Trihackney has on their site because it's clean. And then when I like to copy over the actual commands, right? So the actual commands, so you could copy and paste those. So if I needed to transfer data in the future, and I totally forget how to, because I will, um, there's no way I'm going to remember all this stuff. I could go, I can see your transfer files. I have one for PowerShell. I have all these different transfer notes <laughs> that I can just look at and get started on and, and decide how I want to transfer it. So if SSH isn't available, that's fine. I'll just use these other methods, right? So that's how I'd recommend you do it. Um, and just try to organize your notes. Um, post in the, in the uh, comment section and just let me know how you do it, right? I'm curious. I really want to know, like, how do you guys take notes? I know there's some programs out there where, uh, you know, if you're doing like a CTF or even a real world um, red team test, there's like certain apps out there. And I, I might have a few of those on my Kali. Um, considering I did the TCM uh, security course, I, I did like their basic one. So uh, he, he teaches how to like use different note-taking um, software and, and apps. And, and I, might, I have some of them on my Kali box. I just don't use them as much because I'm still doing like the easy CTS, holding your hands type stuff. Like this is this is super easy, right? They're holding your hand, they're giving you the instructions, they're providing you the commands. And I want to develop that foundation so that eventually uh, I could figure this stuff out on my own, go from hold, holding your hand to, okay, easy without holding your hand, right? And then medium holding your hand, and then medium without holding your hand, and then continue on until I'm ready to for the OSCP <laughs> eventually. Um, so I'm going to copy this. I'm going to throw this in my notes. I will post this in the description of the video. And if you're still using the attack box that they provide you, please stop using it. I'm going to post a, a video in the description showing you how to set up your own attack box. Do us all a favor and set up your own attack box. Stop using the one that they give you. Okay, enough of me rambling. I'm uh, ready to go. All right, have a good one. Over now.